Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, the recovering monogamous stitcher. I'm back with video number 31. Today is Friday, November 10, 2023, and I'm coming to you from the Sunshine State. And now that I'm looking into my <clears throat> camera, it looks like I have a crown on my head. <laughs> um, okay, so <clears throat> we'll talk about this later. I'll just ignore it and move on. Well, welcome back. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. You're so welcome. And if you're new, you're very welcome here. I hope you see something that you enjoy and that you will like and subscribe and come back again. Uh, my channel is continuing to grow slowly, slowly, but every subscriber makes a difference and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, so coming to you from the Sunshine State, uh, we had a good trip down. I even drove through Atlanta. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what next? Skydiving? I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of, I get nervous in uh, busy traffic and when I think people are going faster than they should, um, it makes me nervous, but we get in that HOV lane and we just go right through. I think it doesn't take any more than 20 minutes from the beginning to the end. So. So I did it this time, big girl. Put my big girl pants on and did it. Uh, so let's see. Um, our plans are different this year. I kind of hinted at it before, but we've decided we're going to sell our place here in Florida. Um, I find that being gone six months at a time is a little problematic. Not, not just for mail forwarding, which is always a pain, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, my quilting has come to practically a stop because I don't feel like I'm home long enough to really spread out a project and have it ongoing. And uh, cross stitch is easy, of course. You hold it in your lap, it, you know, that I can do. But so, and, and to be away from our healthcare for six months at a time, we're getting older. Um, anyway, so we're putting our place up for sale. And when it sells, we will go back to Kentucky and then our plan going forward, I don't know if you're interested in all this, just fast forward if you're not, uh, will be to get away for shorter periods of time out of winter, maybe two weeks someplace, and then two or three weeks someplace else or something. We'll take some breaks, but um, we're not wanting to be gone six months at a time anymore. So, so that being the case, when we came down, I did not bring quilts down. In fact, our personal things that I have down here now have to all go back when we go back. So I didn't bring any things to hang on the wall behind me. And when I was setting up this morning, uh, Mr. Nabler said, well, why don't you put, just to have something behind you, why don't you put up that um, hanging that normally we have hanging outside by the back door. So I'll show you that and um, it has different seasonal things that you switch out in it. And so I'll show you that at the end. So instead of a quilt, that's what we have this time. So we will do that. Um, there were a couple questions from the last video that I wanted to respond to. I had questions about how I marked the quilt. If you recall, I showed the double nine patch and that I uh, quilted it in the style of Judy Madsen and I drew lines on the, the flimsy, the quilt top, before it was layered with the batting and backing, and then I quilted on those lines. And I was asked what kind of marker I use, and I use Water Erasable by Clover. Now, I trust the Clover brand. I've been using this kind of marker on my quilts um, for 30 years. I would not put anything on my quilts or my fabric if I didn't trust it. I've never had a problem with this. I would never do an off-brand. I trust Clover. It, possibly Dritz makes this kind of thing. I would trust Dritz brand, but I would not do any off-brand, any from China, Acme brand, whatever. I wouldn't trust anything else. So I'm, I know that this works. And the quilt that I showed last time, because there were so many lines on it, those lines were put on that flimsy before it was on top of the batting. Now, if you use this on your quilt and there's batting under it, it can absorb into the batting, so it takes more water to get it out. Um, a full dunk might even be necessary, but if I'm doing this on a quilt that's on the machine and on batting, I'm usually just putting a dot 
or if I'm just quickly wanting to mark where's the center of such and such so I hit that point, I use an air erasable. This is also by Clover. Now, it will start to disappear relatively quickly. So if you're you know, wanting to mark a spot, okay, I wanna go through this spot, this point, do it right before you're going to quilt it because it'll disappear pretty quickly. But again, this is by Clover, I trust this. So these are the, the kinds of markers I use on my quilt top, that answers that question. Um, and this one disappears by itself. This one with water, I've never had a problem with it. So I trust that. Okay, there's that. So the other question I had was about the glass headed pins that I talked about using because I find them really good for piecing because they're thin, they're little glass headed pins. And did I remember to put it in my things when I came? No, I'm sorry. It's called Little House Glass Headed Pins. They are available on Amazon look up Little House Pins. Now there will be other pins on the page, so look for Little House. They come in a little tin that has a sliding cover, almost like an Altoid, it's not like Altoids, but the cover slides and it's Little House Pins. Um, I think there are 100 in the tin. It's about $14, I think, which is why if I drop one, I crawl around on the floor and find it. Um, but I love them because they're so thin, they don't distort when I'm piecing. Now, I would never use those when I'm on a three-layered quilt with the backing, batting, and quilt. That's, they're just, they're not big enough. I use bigger quilt pins for that. So uh, I will put the information in the notes below because the Little House pins are available from Amazon. They're also available from Fig Tree and Company. Uh, in fact, that's, I heard about Little House pins from um, an online class I had with Joanna Figueroa. Those are her favorite pins for piecing, and they sell them in their shop. So you can look up Little House pins, and they have them also. Okay. Oh, and the, the oops, I'm sorry, these pens, um, I think I usually pick them up at Joanne's, maybe Hobby Lobby, but they're also available on Amazon. So they're widely available, and these are the ones I trust. Okay, that takes care of the questions. Um, let's get to it. Oh, the celebration. I never heard from the person who won this one, so this will go back, and I'm, I've done it twice, so this one will just wait for the next time I'm giving something away. So that one I'm going to put away. Uh, FFO, I finished on the day after I did my last uh, floss tube, I made a boxed corner zippered pouch. Um, it has tabs on each side so you can hold it when you do the zipper. And it's nice and roomy, it's all lined, no raw edges inside. I like this pattern. Um, it was, what is her name? Oh, see now I'm away from home and I, she makes a lot of videos, tutorials. Gemini, Gemini Quilter? Anyway, look up, you can look up um, tutorial boxed corner zipper pouch, and I'm sure it'll come up. Uh, it's very nice. I made, I've made two of these. I made one as a gift for um, my friend I met on the cruise. I sent her a project bag and a uh, boxed corner zipper pouch, and then I made one for me. And I'll be making more because they're really nice. Not hard to make, and the, the finish is nice. So that's my only FFO. And if you watch, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my post of my finished stitch of this, Midnight Ride, Blackbird Designs. I love this. And here it is. I would just love to be able to mount it on the top of that uh, Lone Elm shaker box, but don't think that's in my budget, so I have to look for a creative way to finish that. Um, maybe on paper mache box, I could decoupage the sides and maybe, I don't know. Anyway, things are going in my head. Uh, finding a round frame is a little hard, so we'll see about that. Okay, the other finished is my Biscor new. Okay, I have my Jingle Ball box, all the materials I needed for Jingle Ball. 
I got the um, PDF from Janine McGowan and I finished my pre-stitch. So for the candy cane biscornu, this is the top. You see the back stitching that goes all around. Count it exactly. And she has the um, she has the middle marked with a stitch that'll go out into the seam, so it won't show, but it helps you line it up. So I'm told, I've never done a biscore new, but this is what she explains. And this is the back. Whoops, again, back stitched around. I'm really looking forward to that class. I've, I have other biscore new patterns, and I've not stitched them because I think, I don't know how to even finish this. Love the patterns. So I'm ready for Jingle Ball. I have my schedule here. I have all my materials for each class sorted in plastic bags so I don't get them all mixed up. And I hope I remembered everything, the glue and everything. So that's for the Jingle Ball. Those are the fully finished. At this point, that's all I have fully finished. Uh, my whips. Okay, first, okay, from the book, Winds of Autumn, Blackbird Design. I'm working on, this is called The First Winds of Autumn. It's a, it's a big, finished as a big strawberry. Look at that gorgeous bird. That's from the Winds of Autumn, Blackbird Design. And I did not bring any boards down, so it's gonna be a little hard to show these. I, clipped this to the project bag and I hope that'll show fine. Okay, so I made more progress on this. Birds all filled in, his backpack. And we discussed that last time, that backpack. Uh, this, I think this row is all done. I did that all the way and I've started filling in the house. Uh, there's a lot more viney things coming like from the backpack area and stuff up here yet, so. So the first winds of autumn, blackbird design. Pretty, pretty bird. And I may keep that in my rotation. I, I just love it. Every time I pick it up, I love stitching on it. Um, but I know the season's about over, but I, I don't know. I love Halloween-y fall stuff. Uh, the next uh, work in progress, again, this is my focus piece. Maria Vincenza, and I think Nicola, I heard pronounce it um, Lorita. Lariki, that's and I bow to her expertise. If, if that's Lariki, then it's Lariki. And this is my focus piece. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I always my focus piece is always my oldest whip, and I require myself to stitch on it seven days in a month until it's finished, and it remains my focus until it is finished. So here she is. Actually, I've I've only stitched on her four days so far, so I owe her another three. I think I'm about halfway. This is oops, this is kind of a page break here, so part of the letters are on one page and another, so I've kind of petered down on that, but I did the whole width. Oops, I'm sorry. I've established the whole width. Yay, eating my vegetables first, guys. <laughs> so I thought I might power through and do those um, that border all the way around, but I got kind of uh, enough of that. I want to do some motifs. So I've done, I've added more letters. I've gotten down, uh, let's see, I've gotten down to this chair and the table. Um, there's another chair here coming up. So, so I owe her four more days this month and I'm, I'm so glad to be making some significant progress on this because it was seeming like she was taking a long time. And with one this big, if you're only doing three days out of a month, which is what I normally do for a red sampler, yeah, this one would have been a really long one. So, but she finally became my focus piece, so she's going to get some significant time. Okay, my haul, absolutely zero. And I'm not gonna whine about mail forwarding again, um, but there we are, I have nothing, zero zip, nada. So. My plans going forward um, in the next couple of weeks before my next floss tube, which will be November 24, the day after Thanksgiving, I'll plan to get one up then. Um, I'm going to give um, Maria Vincenza Lariki 
another four days. I'm going to work on the forget-me-not and then I'm going to pick up the red deer sampler for the rest of the time there and see how much I can get done on that. That was my birthday start last year and I do not want that one to have a birthday in February so I want to get that one done too. So of course I want to get them all done. Why, why do I even say this? I just, yeah, I want to get them all done. So that's it with my stitching. No haul, that's my plans. And I'm not showing a quilt, but I am going to show you this uh, framed wall hanging. I made this um, right around 2000. We bought a house in 2000 and I made this to go on the front porch. And it has, uh, this piece switches out. This remains framed. I have plexiglass over it when it's outside. I took it out now so I can show you how this does. But, and it's kind of floppy because it's not behind the plexiglass, plexiglass but it has Velcro. So I Velcro the different pieces on and then it's covered with the plexiglass and hangs outside so it stays clean because you know, bugs and dirt and all that stuff and I didn't want that on there. So this is the, um, this one, I love this one. It's so generic, I could, I could leave that up all the time. But the book, and because I didn't plan to do this ahead of time, I didn't bring the booklet it was either called front door quilts or back door quilts. I can't remember. I'll show you when I'm back in Kentucky. I, I have it. I know exactly where it is. I can put my hands right on it. But it has a bunch of different centers that you can switch out theme-wise. And they're kind of prim, so they're cute. There's the pumpkin. Cute. And all the patterns were in the book. Of course, I chose my own fabrics. There was no such thing as a kit or anything. This is the Christmas tree. It's kind of fun seeing these fabrics. I mean, th these were from a long time ago. This one has gotten terribly faded, the snowman. And I was not very um, thoughtful about the fact that this overlap would shadow through. If I were to do it again, I would have done a, a double layer or I would have put a, um, I mean, um, SF 101 on, on the back and then ironed it on. These are all uh, fused down and then embroidery accents are added. Um, what's that? Yeah, those were, these are with marker. The eyes are French knots. The carrot is ironed on and I use fabric marker for the sticks too. Those are not embroidery, but some of these things have embroidery. Here's for the patriotic. Oops. There's the cat. Tall, skinny cat. And let's see, the whiskers are embroidery floss, French knots for the eyes, and the nose is fused fabric. B skip, and these lines are embroidery. That's fused on, and that's just the whole cut out. So. so it has lots of themes. It was fun. That house had a very shaded front porch. I mean, you could hardly grow impatience unless the impatients were way at the front of the porch so it would get a little bit of sun sometime, but we were in the uh, wooded dunes off Lake Michigan, um, and that porch, no sun. Boston ferns would sometimes live there. This one got kind of bent in the box and the um, chimneys come loose there. It would have to be ironed back down, but it's a house. That's all iron-on fuse, and the um, window panes are embroidery stitches, just like outline stitch. And then a chicken, and I never hung this. I don't know, it just didn't seem my taste, and I thought, now I should be able to figure out how to make that chicken into a turkey, but I'm not an artist. <laughs> I never did it, so anyway. I think I kept the pumpkin up in the fall, October and November. 
and then went right to the Christmas tree. I didn't bother with the chicken. I like that fabric for the chicken though. Kind of indicated feathery kind of, but it wasn't. I have no idea what those fabrics were anymore. It's been a long time ago. So um, it's kind of a cool hanging and the frame I got from the, the um, company. I'm not sure if the designer's husband made it or something, but I ordered it through the book. I ordered the frame and it came with the plexi, no. No, I think Mr. Enabler got the plexiglass cut. Yes, he did, he did. That did not come with plexiglass. Um, anyway, so uh, that's all I have to show for today. This is gonna be a, um, a record short video. Uh, I like short videos anyway. I don't want to waste your time. There's so many floss tubers out there. So many new ones keep popping up. Isn't it fun? Our community is just growing and growing. And, you know, every time someone comes with a different style or something else that they like, I mean, they're bringing in new viewers. And I, I love it. I think it's so much fun. Well, I appreciated you stopping by and, and visiting with me today. I will be back in two weeks on uh, November 24th, and that will be video number 32. I look forward to seeing you then. I hope you have two weeks of happy stitching. Bye-bye, Floss Tube.